Hi everybody, I'm Jared Pike. This is Shell Point Today for Monday, September 16th. On today's show, history professor Adrian Kerr will preview his five-part lecture series on the history of India. We'll also go square dancing in the Island Health Club and find out how you can learn all the steps, even if you're a complete beginner. But first, to bring us Monday's headlines is our newest team member, Kara Minui. Kara? Thank you very much, Jared. The first event we want to bring to your attention is about caregiving. If you or someone you know is a caregiver, then you realize that caregivers also need to take care of themselves. Part of that is regular socialization, which is the purpose of the carefree group. This group makes regular plans to enjoy meals, out, social excursions, and other Shell Point activities. Learn more about this group at an Academy event this morning at 10.15 a.m. in the Manatee Room on the island. You'll hear from people who have benefited from this group and get more information, so make sure to attend. Also today, we hear from the Shell Point Pharmacy about blood thinners, also called anticoagulants. These drugs, like heparin and coumadin, can be lifesavers, but they may also have side effects. Get all the details from our pharmacy expert, Yao Audu Sarkodi, as he speaks today at 1.15 p.m. in the social center on the island. There is no cost, and all are welcome. And then tomorrow, we have two events for people interested in all things international. If you've traveled the world, whether for work, for missions, or just for fun, then you're invited to a Get to Know Your Neighbor event happening tomorrow. Anyone who has spent time overseas is invited to share stories and share some socialization with your fellow travelers. This Get to Know Your Neighbor event happens tomorrow at 1 p.m. in the Grand Cypress Room at the Woodlands. And tomorrow morning, the focus is on India. The Indian economy is the third largest in the world, and their population is the second largest. But how did India become India? They have such an extensive history that it takes five sessions to cover it all. Join Adrian Kerr as we discover the history of India, an academy class that starts tomorrow at 10 a.m. in the Grand Cypress Room at the Woodlands. Terry Koloth has this preview. Hello, I'm here with Professor Adrian Kerr, and we're talking about a five-session series on India. Thank you for joining me, Professor Kerr. Thank you, Terry. It's a pleasure as always. Now, India, you say, is on course to be the world's third largest economy and currently leading the technical service industry. This is really amazing to, for, for a nation that's so gigantic and so such differences in economics. And tell us a little bit about it. The way I try to explain India in the modern context is to just go back a few hundred years to the, the planet as it was around about 1500. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were hovering over the planet Earth at that time, you'd have seen two giant empires which dominated the planet. One was China and the other one was India. What we tend to forget is that those two populations were made up about two-thirds of the world's population at that time. So if you're a space alien visiting Earth, those would be the two cultures that you'd visit. Europe was just coming out of the Middle Ages. Um, Americas didn't exist as we know them today. We've had two or three hundred years of um, abnormality, the Indians would say, where the West has grown to the strength that it is today, mainly because of the Americas, mainly because of the United States, and the growth in, in Western Europe. That's been the driver of the planet for the last three hundred years, say. They see it as this is now returning to the natural order of things, and that China and, and India together were the major drivers for the planet for a thousand years, and they are returning to their natural position, and we in the West will fade away to some extent, um, and we'll be balanced by those two superpowers, if the current progress they're making continues. Now, progress on how many levels? Every level, or...? No, actually, that's a very interesting point in that um, if you look at the United States, you see it as a totality, you see it as a common um, language, you see a common ethical standards, common government, um, similar religion mm -hmm. across the country, but using a broad term. Mm -hmm. In India, that is not the case. Uh, it's the world's largest democracy by numbers, um, and has been since 1947, when it gained independence from Britain. Um, but it is made up of many, many cultural groups. 
some of them don't communicate, can't communicate with each other. Uh, English is a sort of standard language, but it's not. Um, if you go to southern India, for instance, to the wonderful uh, Tamil um, area, uh, they speak a different language. They are very different looking. They are very different in their uh, religion, different in their culture. Um, and in northern India, modern, bustling, overcrowded, Delhi, um, Bombay, of course, uh, very different again. A very modern city. Bombay is only as old as the British um, um, control of India. Before that, it didn't hardly existed. Calcutta in the east um, was the British capital and now um, has, has declined somewhat. Um, so you have different areas of India which have different characteristics and it doesn't always speak with one voice. Overlay that, the religious issue. Um, when India and Pakistan split in 1947, there was a migration both ways. Mm -hmm. um, but there is still a significant um, conflict under the surface um, between the Hindu majority, particularly in the north, and the Muslim minority. India is the, I think, the third largest Muslim country in the world by number. So we tend to forget that. It isn't a single block in any way, either language, religion, or culture. Um, so it's a melting pot. Mm -hmm. In that melting pot, you have some tremendous um, advantages, numbers of people, low cost of production, for instance, um, good language skills, good mathematical skills, always has been. For instance, the uh, Indians discovered uh, 500 AD that the Earth went around the sun and predicted the, the time and the size of the planet, so, and they invented the concept of zero that we use to this day. They calculated pi to six decimal places, and so on and so on. The Indians have always been masters of science. Um, the downside, if you like, is something that we see when you go into the countryside in the extreme poverty. Mm -hmm. um, the literacy rate is still very, very high compared to the West. Um, medical support is, is very low compared to the Western standards. Standard living is desperately poor. It's an agrarian, peasant-based. Uh, most of the 1.3 billion Indians live mm -hmm. off the land. Communications are, are poor. Uh, isolation throughout most of the country. And then you get these megapolis, 15 million people in Bombay and, and Calcutta mm -hmm. and in Delhi. Huge, the size of Holland, the population of Holland living in Bombay. Um, so there there's extreme wealth. You have condos, which I visited last time I was there, which cost $2 million for a two-bedroom condo overlooking the bay of uh, Mumbai, where the film stars and the wealthy people live. Five miles away, you have half a million people living in squalor. In the, the movies that we've seen, um, Slumdog Millionaire, it's there. Mm -hmm. There are three million people living under those conditions with no sewage, no running water. So it's a huge contrast, India. And a vast population doesn't necessarily equal dominance in the world stage. That, that's a very good observation. In fact, many people say that America's days are numbered and China and India are going to take over. There's a very interesting slide I'm going to show, which actually shows that the United States is still streets ahead of pro in terms of productivity per individual. Mm -hmm. The reason why China and India is, are so dominant and rising in terms of GDP is numbers. Mm -hmm. America has 300-odd million people compared to 1.3, compared to 1.5 million. And that's the drive of GDP. If you look at um, performance, productivity per person, America is streets ahead of those civilizations. And yet in India, there is nothing anywhere else that I've ever seen um, that takes you back to, on one day, you can go back thousands of years. You know, the sounds, the smells, the bullock going through the pasture. It's just amazing. And then when you see that against a modern cityscape. You're quite right. And that's one of the charms of India. I'm going back at Christmas with my daughter to visit again. It's such a huge country. You can only take a little slice of the time. Right. But you, know, you, you can go from 2013 to 500 BC um, in a moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can visit uh, temples which were built 600 AD, 1000 uh, AD, and they are still being used today. It's, it's as if time has just moved on and these people still have their beliefs, mm -hmm. their Hindu beliefs and gods and customs. And, and dietary, and dress, and, and religion. Mm -hmm. I mean, the religion is, is a huge part of their lives, more than we recognize in the West. Mm -hmm. And for instance, the greatest gathering of humanity ever known on this planet occurred in January, um, when 
10 million people came to bathe in the Ganges to wash away their sins. All the planets were lined up. It was the Kumbh Mela mega version. It happens every 144 years. And in one day, 5 million people dived into the Ganges to wash away their sins. They weren't peasants, all of them. Some of them were bankers. There was a Bollywood film actress who is as well known as any of our actresses, who was a superstar. There she was in the Ganges washing away her sins. It was, it's something which is, unless you see it, um, and these you know, 10 million people accumulate on one piece of river, uh, it just shows their devotion to their religion and their culture. Interesting. Well, as always, we are going to be delighted to hear more, and there's so much more. It's going to be five sessions, an hour each time with time for some questions, some, some good visuals that Professor Kerr will share with you, and again, his own personal experience. And now Jared is here to help us kick up our heels. Jared? That's right, Kara. In fact, if you look on pages 28 and 29 of your Shell Point Life magazine, you'll see lists of new activity groups that have recently formed here at Shell Point. And one of them is the square dancing group. Square dancing is good old-fashioned fun and exercise, and really, anyone can learn how to do it. They follow a square dance caller on TV, who first teaches you how to do it, and then you practice at full speed. Now, if you've never square danced before, it may seem a little intimidating, but now there's a time set aside specifically for you. Beginners Square Dancing now meets every Monday night at 6.30 p.m. in the Island Health Club and allows you to learn the basic moves step by step. So you'll be ready to join in with the rest of the group. We visited the square dancing group to find out why it's so much fun. My name is Jane Johnston and I live at Lucina. How long have you lived at Shell Point? Two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I was very excited when I heard we were starting to square dance. I, I haven't danced in about 40 years. I think everybody's really getting uh, back into it. I didn't square dance much, but I was a music teacher in the public schools. I taught the children how to do it. <laughs> and I uh, kept one lesson ahead, you know. And <laughs> That it was fun, and they were pretty good. They got to be pretty good at it. When I was into it about 40 years ago, uh, I do remember how much fun it was, and it was a lot of fun. It's a, it's a fun activity. Ruth Taylor, 90 years old. I haven't danced since 71. When I went home, I was just walking on air. I just thought, oh, this is wonderful. <laughs> The dance itself is very simple. It requires uh, eight people uh, for a square, four couples. The do-si-do -si -do is passing, you face your partner and you pass right shoulders. And then we do an alamand left, which you face your corner, grasp forearms, and go around in a circle back to your partner. Then we have a grand right and left. You grasp your partner's right hand, and then you just alternate arms coming around the square. And then the last step is a promenade, and that you hold hands and, and just go around the circle to come back to your home position. Right now we have a DVD, uh, which is really working well because we get a lesson and then a dance. And, uh, and we can repeat the lesson as many times as we want to till we're comfortable. DVD that we use, I mean, it, it just takes you right from step mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. And anybody can learn that. It's, it's very easy to learn. It's not that hard. No, it's, it's uh, I think they could pick it up. Back in Indiana, I think we was a little faster, a little faster at dancing. They swing you around. And we have two people dancing who've never, ever square danced or heard a caller before. One of them is my husband. And uh, so th this is great fun, and I'm sure you all could tell it's just wonderful exercise and a fun way to exercise. The ladies and I have been talking about is we miss our petticoats. 
We got to wear all those petticoats and flounce your skirt around. And if you watch some of the ladies, they are flipping their skirts a little bit. That's part of square dancing. I can't imagine anyone trying it and not liking it. Good, yes. clean, fun, and it's, uh, you know, you meet a lot of nice people. The group is great. Oh, yes, they're, they're, they're all so friendly, and yeah, I enjoy it. We like the exercise. What's, that's another thing. It's good, clean fun, and it's really healthy um, for us to get our heart rates up and to try all these uh, different tasks. Um, so it's, it's really good. Monday nights at uh, 7 o'clock. It's absolutely free. <laughs> and the company's great. Want to join in the fun? Well, what if you're a first-timer or haven't had the chance to practice square dancing in a while? There is now a beginner's group, which allows you to learn the basic moves step by step, so you'll be ready to join in with the rest of the group. The beginner square dancing group meets Mondays at 6.30 p.m. in the Island Health Club. There's no cost, and all are welcome to try it out. Now, before we share what else is happening on our Monday, Let's get a preview of this week's Channel 13 radio program, Listening to the Words. Grandparents and Grandchildren, an Investment in Our Future. That's the subject of this week's Listening to the Words program. Tune in and peek over the shoulders of a few of the hundreds of Shell Point residents sharing their experiences with their grandchildren. Look into the treasure box a grandfather gives his grandson in a dialogue brought to life by a young man from Shell Point TV whose grandparents live here at Shell Point. Hear Marianne Bennett of Shell Point portraying a hero grandmother fulfilling her life's dream. Share the feeling of pride that Shell Pointer Jack Hubbard holds in his description of his grandfather. Feel the heartfelt, step-by-step -step description of the birth of a young grandmother's first grandchild. And give your smile plenty of exercise when you hear what some young grandkids have to say about their grand elders. It's all yours, as usual, every day this week when you tune your TV to Shell Point Channel 13. This is your reader host, David Howenstein, with the reminder that you and yours can also hear the 30-minute program anytime by going to www.shellpoint.net slash listening. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Shell Point TV's Happening segment. I'm Bev Chandley, and this is Suzanne Zavada, and we're going to tell you about the activities offered through Shell Point today. We're going to start out this morning at 9 o'clock with Round Robin Men's Doubles Tennis down at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. And then 9.15, we have billiards. That'll be at the Resident Activity Center. Also at 9.15, we have pottery with instruction available in the pottery studio. And we have one more 9.15 activity. Virtual bowling will be in the Resident Activity Center. At 10 o'clock, the Suzy Q boat will go off to Nervous Nellie's for lunch. Sign up is required for that. At 10.30, the Disciple Men's Bible Study Group will be in the game room of the Woodlands. Then we move to 1045, where table tennis will be having a clinic, and that'll be in the tarpon room on the island. A health connections class is being held at 1130. We have specifics and strength training. In the health club currently, that is full. Here's Suzanne to tell you what we have going on this afternoon. We'll start the afternoon off at 12 o'clock with Mahjong being played in the stable room at the Woodlands. At 1.15, we have another Health Connections anticoagulation in the social center on the island. Sign up is required. Also at 1.15, we have Scrabble being played in the library lounge. We have table tennis in the tarpon room. And our last 1.15 activity is tone chimes playing in the osprey room on the island. At 145, we have another Health Connections, Balance and Mobility Training Level 1 in the Health Club on the island. This is closed. At 2 o'clock, the BDI Bead Club will be in the Oak Room at the Woodlands. At 3 o'clock, we have the Pilates Stretch Health Connections in the Health Club on the island. Also at 3, we have a Suzy Q trip leaving to Rum Runners for dinner. Sign up is required. At 315, the Shell Point Singers will be rehearsing in the choir room of the Village Church. 
At 6.30, Duplicate Bridge will be in the game room at the Woodlands. And also at 6.30, we have Beginners Square Dancing in the health club on the island. And then at 7 o'clock, we have Square Dancing in the health club on the island. That's all for Monday. We hope you have a great day, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Hi, I'm Terry Coleth with your Academy information for Monday. At 9.15, Developing Skills on Windows 7 continues in the Computer Teaching Center on the island. And at 10.15, the Anatomy of Words continues in the Buttonwood Room at the Woodlands, and all are welcome. At 10.15, we welcome the Carefree Group for a discussion on who they are and what they do in the Manatee Room on the island, and you are all welcome. Tomorrow, we have a digital camera prep school starting with Herb Sklar of Eagles Preserve. And we have the story of India with Professor Adrian Kerr. Menus for Monday. In the crystal room, the crystal platter is braised beef with mashed Yukon gold potatoes and buttered peas. The dinner special is the home cooking night for $9.95, and the soup of the day is cream of chicken. In the Island Cafe for lunch on Monday, enjoy a barbecue chicken sandwich with pasta salad for $6.95. The dinner special is a strawberry walnut salad with grilled chicken for $7.95. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Hi, I'm Karen Chamberlain, and this is Eleanor Perkins, yes. and we are part of the Women's Ministry from the Village Church, and we have a wonderful Bible study that we are going to start this fall, October 8th, and we would like to share some of the uh, excitement that we feel yes. about this Bible study. Eleanor, remember when we looked at several Bible studies and then we looked at this one, Missing Pieces by Jennifer, yes. and we all knew this was the study. We did. Um, what made that so special? I mean, what are some of the things that you saw and you were excited about? Yeah. I guess the first thing that excited me was realizing that she's blind and has been blind since she was 15 years old. She has such poise. She has such Bible knowledge that it is really amazing. Mm -hmm. And her insight, living in a dark world, was just moving to me as I listened. We all noticed that some of her topics were certainly topics that we've talked about before, that we've all studied at different times in our lives, about difficulties in your life and when you go through hard times and ask the questions, God, are you there? God, do you really care? You know, why are these things happening? You know, why do bad things happen to good people? You know, but she has a wonderful insight into that and a, a use of scripture that impressed all of us. Because I know as we all looked at two or three different books, every one of us came back and said, this is the book. This is the one we want to do because we were all so touched by how she did it as well as with the workbook itself. You know, the workbook is an important part mm -hmm. of this Bible study. Very. We will be seeing a video first, and the videos are 25 minutes, very short, mm -hmm. uh, because Jennifer is blind and has to memorize everything. But um, when we break down into small groups, if you don't have the workbook, you're missing out so much on this study because this is where God really becomes real to you and he fills your missing pieces. It's just once you start this study, you will see yeah. why it's called Missing Pieces. You know, Karen, I've been in every Bible study that the church has held in the nine years that I've been here because I started going when we first moved in. To me, of all the ones we've done, I have enjoyed this workbook more than any of the others, and it has been one that is, not that it's, I don't want to use the word easy to do, it's applicable, it's doable, it doesn't take a long time. Exactly. I benefit by the questions she asks, and, and I have just, I have been equally blessed by the book as I have by the videos. I honestly think that you could do this study if you didn't have a means of having the videos, I think if you had the workbook that you would receive a great deal out of simply yes, the doing the well. workbook. Mm -hmm. But to, ha to watch her on the videos is, is a tremendous spiritual blessing to watch her. You forget that she's blind. And then when you realize that you're going to go, 
wow. <laughs> You know, in how she handles herself and the grace she has. And she laughs at herself and she shares her personal difficulties in walking in a dark world and, and her ongoing difficulties. Mm -hmm. I mean, her life is certainly not easy no matter how many years she's been blind because she lives in a seeing world. Right. How about if we show everyone That's Jennifer Rothschild wonderful. and see how they react? God does care for you, and He wants you to receive His compassion, but in order to truly experience the compassion of God, you must be willing to receive it in whatever form it comes. God is faithful to you to provide you exactly what you need, the exact portion that you need, and therefore we say to our souls, the Lord is my portion. I just can't do this anymore, God, and I just want to quit, and nothing is making sense. God, could you possibly be making a mistake? Do you err? Questions. There's lots of them. And every time we experience a question in our life, it's just like it takes a chunk out of our faith. It just creates a, a missing piece. I want you to ask questions of faith so that you can experience an encounter with God. Well, I hope everybody saw what we've what we seen. <laughs> and of course, we've seen some of the videos too, which are just wonderful. Mm -hmm. So we would like all of you to join us. You may start signing up September 15th yes. at the Village Church and before and after church. And if you don't go to the Village Church, you can call the church office and uh, reserve your place and get a workbook. So we really hope to see you there yes. because we just know that you're gonna be blessed in a mighty way. We're glad you joined us for today's show. Tune in tomorrow as a former missionary to China tells us how her work is continuing, even in retirement. We'll also find out about the new Carillon, now ringing daily at the Village Church and the Shell Point couple who inspired the new bells. Until then, this is Shell Point Today for Monday, September 16th. I'm Kara Minowy. And I'm Jared Pike. And from all of us here at Shell Point TV, we hope you have a great day, and we'll see you again tomorrow.